Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Today, uh, in this session, I'm going to talk about a uh, program that we are developing with uh, Economical Cooperation Organization uh, uh, based in Tehran, Iran, uh, which is responsible for 10 countries in the region with the uh, cooperation of United Nations Human Settlement Office, uh, UN Habitat Disaster Mitigation Office in uh, Iran. Uh, the outline uh, of the presentation basically will be, uh, I'll talk a little, I'll give a little information about the UN Habitat Disaster Mitigation Office, the mandate, you know, the components of the, uh, of the organization and uh, the overall projects. And uh, I'll give some brief information about the Eco Secretariat. Uh, it's important to know. Uh, it's important to know the hazard profile of the region, and uh, finally, I will get into uh, giving some detailed information on the project, uh, the objective of the projects, the components, details, methodologies, and uh, the outcomes and some results as well. Now, uh, looking at the Habitat Disaster Mitigation Office uh, is basically. Uh, uh, was established in 2007 with an agreement between uh, uh, UN Habitat and the Republic of Iran. And the objective is uh, to uh, rehabilitate uh, urban settlements in the region, and particularly Iran, and to improve the preparedness measurements for potential uh, disasters, especially earthquakes. Uh, furthermore, to, uh, uh, to support the capacity, uh, their capacity building in the area of er earthquake-resisting housing, uh, in the means of uh, reconstruction and also retrofitting uh, processes. Uh, to, to have a link to disaster mitigation with sustainable relief and reconstruction is another objective. And finally, to disseminate this knowledge through the whole region. Uh, the mandate uh, uh, within the statements of the agreement are basically to uh, strengthen the cooperation of the Republic of uh, Islamic Republic of Iran and other United Nations member uh, states with the UN Habitat and other UN agencies as well. And uh, to promote participation of the experts, scientists and urban managers in the UN Habitat activities and more specifically in the field of earthquake resistant construction. Uh, to increase the possibilities for interested member states to provide development resources, funds and contribute towards capacity enhancement uh, in the earthquake resistant construction through technical and financial means. And finally, to promote UN Habitat mandates activities in the Republic, uh, Islamic Republic of Islam uh, of Iran. Uh, under this objective, we have develop, developed our five years program as uh, uh, four components. Component A: seismic risk mitigation for public, public facilities. B: dissemination of knowledge for st sustainable urban development. C: enforcement of the building codes. And four uh, D is the project management and the model cities. And looking at the Eco Secretariat, it has been it's established by the three countries, is, which is uh, Iran, Pakistan, and uh, Turkey, in 1985, and was uh, as basically successor organization of RCD, which is a regional cooperation uh, of development, was established in 1964, and uh, it was existed un up to 1979, and. Uh, Looking at the overall mandate and mission of the uh, objectives of the Eco Secretariat, we can see that they are also working a very, in a very close mandate of what we have to sustainable economic development of the member states and also development of transport and communication infrastructures, economic liberalization and privatization, and also progressive removal of trade barriers and promotion of intra regional trade. Furthermore, giving like technical assistance, economical and fund, ex uh, fund service for the, uh, for the member countries. It's, uh, it's important to mention that in 1992, uh, this economic cooperation was, uh, uh, was uh, uh, included uh, another seven countries. And those countries are uh, Islamic Republic of Afghanistan, uh, Azerbaijan, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyz Republic, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan and Uzbekistan. Now, uh, what is the project? The project is basically we have uh, a mutual agreement with the, with the, with the uh, Economic uh, Cooperation Organization, Eco Secretariat, and the UN Habitat to develop a project uh, that uh, contains all these 10 countries and uh, in regard with the response uh, enhancement of the response capacity to uh, uh, disaster risk reduction associated with the natural hazards and particularly retrofitting and rehabilitation measurements for these countries. 
Looking at the hazard profile of the region, we can see that the whole region is almost uh, uh, prone to different types of the, uh, of the, of the hazards and uh, disasters such as earthquakes, landslides, floods, sandstorms, and so on. And uh, obviously, Iran is, uh, is an earthquake-prone country, as you may see from, the, uh, from this slide. And uh, this is just a memory from 2003 BAM earthquake. As you can see, the, the citadel was like 2,000 two years old, and one day after the earthquake, it was just uh, uh, rubbish. So uh, the, uh, actually, that was like a big earthquake. Even that was a big earthquake with, with 6.2 uh, magnitude, but they destroyed almost the whole city. And another sandstorm in Iran, we can easily see that. Uh, the key indicators in these projects are that we need to get the list of the existing public facilities in these member countries uh, from uh, relevant ministries. And we are going to have a vulnerability study and a prioritization list for the essential public facilities. Finally, uh, we will uh, review the disaster management system and disaster reduction policies in these countries. And then uh, we will select out of this, uh, in, in this prioritization list, we are going to select three, three uh, buildings from each country, and then we are going to have uh, retrofitting designs and, uh, uh, and uh, also uh, assessment uh, feasibility studies to most three resemble school, hospital, and administrative building. Then, furthermore, we are going to uh, define some cost-benefit analysis and also pre uh, probable budget for the overall, overall assessment of that prioritization list. And uh, furthermore, this will go give, give us information and we'll uh, on to prepare some guidelines and technical documents on uh, future construction types and uh, all other information so that we can enforce their building codes and also prepare some mass awareness campaigns. The implementation is going to be within the uh, responsibility of UN Habitat and, and Eco Secretariat. A project coordination unit will be developed under this, uh, 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 under this cooperation. And each relevant agency from the member countries will provide uh, a key person, which is going to be like a liaison between the uh, coordination unit and the mother agency. And uh, the coordination unit will be responsible for the project coordination, financial management, monitoring and evaluation and reporting. The objective, uh, this objective has been defined in four different components, and these are component A list of the public facilities and prioritization list will be done. The component B is the feasibility studies and retrofit design. Component C is the support for enhancement of the response capacity and disaster management system. And finally, training through mass awareness campaigns, which we are going to provide some technical guidelines and documents in this regard. As I said, in the component A, uh, the list of the existing public facilities will be gathered. That is for schools, hospitals, administrative buildings, social service buildings, dormitories. And vulnerability assessment will be done to make the prioritization list. While we are looking at the criteria for prioritization, we can easily see that the, uh, there are certain issues, key issues that are going to be considered. One of them, the uh, accessibility during the disasters, the technical features of the building, such as the construction a uh, year, the type of the building, the number of the stories, and so on. And distance to a center, distance to fault lines, importance in disaster management plan, number of people getting served, working hours, population served, and so on and so forth. These are some criteria that we are going to consider during the prioritization. And uh, the component B, which is the feasibility studies and retrofitting design, as I said, we are going to select one of each uh, building from hospital, schools, and also administrative building. And this is going to make like 10 buildings from each country, I mean three buildings from each country, which is going to make like 30 buildings at all in whole 10 countries. And then uh, <coughs> these are going to be medical facilities, education facilities, and administrative facilities, as I have mentioned before. We are going to first find out what are the key assessment procedures and what will be the feasibility studies conducted in this manner. So first we are going to de de determine the seismic deficiencies. We are going to establish a rehabilitation method and obtain as build information, select rehabilitation method, methods, and then identify rehabilitation schemes, and finally do the final designs. In this manner, it's important to mention that the rehabilitation and retrofitting methods, methods that are going to be proposed are going to be cost-effective methods and are going to be mainly innovative techniques. 
As you can see, we can uh, start. We will first, of course, start with the data collection and also some investigations. Which data collection will, will include some uh, uh, destructive and non-destructive tests in the building, like in situ and laboratory material testing, geotechnical investigations, soil investigations, and so on. Survey of the building is going to be conducted. Seismic performance assessment will be done within the uh, within the uh, using 3D models and uh, linear and non-linear. Uh, uh, seismic analysis and finally seismic retrofit and strength, strengthening and renovation projects will be conducted. Renovation projects are also going to contain uh, architectural, mechanical and electrical systems as well. Uh, the objective of the uh, uh, of the rehabilitation, as you can see, we can use different types of the uh, conventional method, or we can use with some type of innovative techniques, such as seismic uh, retrofitting with uh, supplemental dampings or dampers or energy dissipators or base isolators and so on and so forth. And finally, of course, the cost-benefit analysis are very important. And building, a building can only be retrofitted if it is technically feasible, socially acceptable, and financially affordable. In that manner, we will rank, uh, uh, rank, uh, uh, rank an, uh, as a, co a replacement cost, which is going to be around 30 to 40 percent. And depend on the function, age, and the sector operation requirements, this cost-benefit analysis will be conducted. And finally, component, component C, which is going to support the enhancement of response capacity and disaster management system. We are going to have a technical review on the disaster management system in these countries to find out what are the gaps and you know, what are they doing and uh, define the possible improvement plans in compliance with the building codes. And uh, pr finally, prepare training campaigns and disseminate technical expertise for mass awareness of these uh, countries. Uh, as you know, the basic tenets of disaster risk management are to understand and co qualify, quantify the existing hazard, which is going to be through seismo seismological observations, earthquake hazard, earthquake risk, and so on. And we shall not increase the existing risk, we shall, we shall decrease the existing risk, tra or transfer the risk, or basically go improve emergency management system. I'm going to skip this because I'm just getting out of time, but uh, uh, I will just... Uh, and also this, the outcomes. The outcomes of this project will be basically a key report for the institutions that enables them to take decisions regarding investment in retrofitting and rehabilitation of essential, essential assets, technical guidelines and possible local construction methods and post-disaster damage rehabilitation, and possible training and mass awareness campaigns, and is going to serve as a basis for the future donors to provide some loans and is going to be potential for demonstrating innovative technologies to reduce disruption and maximize economies. Thank you very much for your attention.